Hello, welcome to my rock store. Today we are looking at Karuna samples from the big iron mine in the north of Sweden. And uh, we are looking for samples for more stabilizer to work, but that's a chance to make a visual record of my samples, as well as showing you how some of these rocks actually look like. So here the table is full with samples from up there. And uh, before we go into the details of the rocks, I'd like to quickly show you where these rocks are from here. We have a little map and this is the main mine, the Kirunavara mine. And this is where a good chunk of our samples are coming from. We also sample some surface deposits. Here is Rectus Grooven at the surface and uh, Lusavara. And sorry if my pronunciation is not perfect, some of these names are hard for me. And uh, furthest out we have Nukutsavara. And uh, these are the different deposits we have available for our little study. So let's start with the main mine and uh, then hopefully I can show you some of the other sample types as well. If you follow me over here, here is a rather nice piece of uh, massive magnetite and this is a magnet pen and to demonstrate how magnetic it is I can put the pen here and it stands upright on the sample. So this is really high grade magnetite rich iron ore and um, you can just about see it's very fine grained for most portions. So this is really what the miners want and uh, this is what's making most of the European steel these days. And uh, here's another sample also from the main mine and here we have a nicely cut side and again you see it's very fine grained but there's some intriguing micro textures in there. In some places we find these somewhat coarser veins coming through here or portions whatever uh, you want to interpret them as and um, these are coarser grained magnetite and I'll show you something like this in a minute. Um, if we jump over here, here is a former display specimen from LKAB, that's the company that's running the mine there. And there we have the finer grained portions and there we have these domains or veins of coarser grained material. You might remember the Elaco video that we did a little while back, but we also have these later intrusive, seemingly intrusive veins of coarse crystalline material. So this is actually very, very typical, seemingly, for these deposits. And uh, let me just turn this around. You don't see so much here, but uh, there is a kind of a, a different grain size that you can see here versus here and here. And uh, there is a little bit of appetite and other vein material in some of these samples. And uh, most of it is again magnetite, as you can see from the magnet that is standing upright on the sample. So here is another massive one and uh, this one is uh, medium grained I would say and uh, I promise you it will also be magnetic. So oops. Uh, so let's try that again. So here the magnet is holding and uh, this means it's very high grade iron ore full of magnetite. The uh, next sample I'd like to show you is this one here. This one here <clears throat> has a few veins, mainly apatite, but also some other mineral faces. There is some actinolite here. You can just about see the greenish fibrous material. And uh, then we have loads of these little veins going through here. And there can be some um, chloride, calcite, and there's some white material here. There's also some sulfites, some barites every now and then. So there is a bit of extra material there as well. So here are uh, yet another sample again with some veins and um, the uh, most, the dominant portion of the rock is indeed fine grained magnetite. So that was um, a quick introduction to the samples from the main mine and uh, I'd like to move to uh, Nukutsavara now and uh, what we see here is um, uh, a more breccia style material and uh, if you look at uh, this sample to start with for example it is a little magnetic but not as strong 
and uh, we have a breccia type texture with large broken portions of apatite in a finer grained magnetite rich matrix. There's a bit of rust there, so hematite is present as well. There's a bit of copper there, you see the kind of turquoise colors here. And uh, most of it, however, is a breccia type. And uh, here we have to think about uh, deformation, but uh, probably in a, hmm, I would argue, a gas rich kind of uh, um, uh, process breaking from gases. This could be just plain kinematic, but uh, somehow having seen the Alaco ones, I'd like to think this has been shattered by some uh, magmatic processes, but that's of course an interpretation. So here we have another sample that I think is quite interesting. Here we have a rather thick apatite rich vein in finer grained magnetite. And here you see a second generation of magnetite cutting through the vein of apatite. So there's a vein in the vein, if you will, and uh, this is very interesting. So this vein cuts across here. You can see this to be of younger generation. And uh, here you get a nice 3D idea. So this is not kind of just coming parallel or late stage with the apatite. No, this is a different generation, literally speaking. So, there is also some more massive portions here. Here we have the magnetite rich portion and uh, the pen kind of holds well on it. And here we have a more apatite rich portion. And uh, you can see that uh, this has a nice boundary here. And of course, uh, the apatite is currently not the most sought after material there in Kiruna. We're looking mainly for iron ore, but the apatite will probably become useful in the future. Phosphorus is very important as a fertilizer and apatite has also a lot of rare earth elements. So this may actually become an additional source of rare earth elements in the future. So here we have some portions of almost exclusive apatite. There's a few veins in there, but here the reddish kind of a light uh, material and partly a little bit greenish material that is the apatite rich portions. So here, oh, this is a really heavy specimen. Here we have a little bit of a boundary. This is, uh, oops, let's try the other one. This is a little bit of magnetite here and it's pretty high grade. The magnet holds rather well. And uh, here we have the boundary to some of the phosphor rich apatite zones. So, I think uh, that gives us a good impression. Just uh, a last tiny specimen here to highlight the Brexia type character of these samples out there in Nukutsavara. And, uh, well, as I said, I'd like to think this is shattering from gas-rich ascent of materials, of fluids, and potentially even um, magmatic material. But uh, this has to be shown in a different study, I guess. So, I'd like to move on and uh, show you some samples from uh, Lusavara. And here we have uh, magnetite rich samples as well as some country rock material. Let's start with the magnetite. Here's one of the magnetite rich materials. It's quite dense, really. There we have some veins again and uh, partly greenish. So, this is uh, probably apatite and some alteration minerals. There can also be some calcite in some of them. And uh, the main portion of the rock should be magnetic, and so it is. So, this is a reasonably good magnetite to be mined if one wants to kind of produce a lot of iron. And uh, here's a similar sample. But uh, here we see a bit of uh, veining and some other minerals amongst the magnetite. And uh, here we are probably, we have to accept that this might not be our best ore material, simply because the grade of magnetite is not the highest. We also have some country rock materials here in order to test how the ore relates to the country rock. And here is some porphyry material, for example, from the area. This is an igneous rock from around the outcrop and uh, it's got a fair portion of magnetite but it's by no means as good so the magnet has a little bit of attraction but it's not very strong i can't get it to kind of really stand properly so uh, this is slightly different here we're dealing with the igneous rocks that are the hosts to the deposits here's another one this is a porphyritic sample again you can just about see the porphyritic texture here and uh, while there's a mild attraction here 
it's not the strongest. So there is magnetite in there, probably more than in many other igneous rocks, but it's not at this point or quality. So here we have a foot wall country rock sample and uh, here it's quite, well, I would say messed around. It's been sheared and you have all sorts of kind of strung out portions of it. And uh, there's also veins in there and there can be uh, calcite in there and also some secondary minerals. This is uh, a mixed sample, if you will, and uh, there is a bit of uh, magnetic attraction. I tried it earlier. So this holds here, but if I want to get it to kind of hold in the lighter colored portion, it doesn't do the trick. So here we seem to have different veins of uh, material, some of them quite magnetite rich, but for the most part, these samples are not necessarily ore quality. So, I'd like to kind of move on to Rector's Groover now. And uh, here we have uh, kind of what we've seen so far, but yet again mixed in a different uh, variety. Here we seem to have magnetite and a lot of apatite, but it seems to be mainly veins of one in the other. And uh, a good sample for that is uh, this here. Here we have a vein of uh, apatite in magnetite. And if I try that here, it's it's okay, but it will it seems to push the magnet right into the magnetite again. So here we have veins of apatite, and this seems to be uh, a characteristic feature in this particular area there. And here we have again the veins in the more massive magnetite here. So over here we have um, the whole thing the other way around. Here there's a dominance of apatite and uh, there's magnetite veins that cut through them. And uh, if I try this, then yeah, I barely get a grip of the magnet. So here's a few more of those guys. Looking at the shine of this, there's also some hematite in there. And yeah, no attraction there. So there's some flaky hematite and uh, this is probably very useful if you're into phosphorus and rare earth, but uh, if you're into kind of uh, getting iron ore, this is not the best. And here we have a similar one with veins of iron rich minerals in an appetite rich kind of matrix. And uh, there are some interesting kind of samples that we are also keen to work with right now. We have here some calcite rich vein material here, and uh, this is metamorphosed. It looks like marble now, of course. And uh, this will give us some potential end memory compositions for the materials surrounding it. And uh, not enough, we have some samples of anhydrite here, which we have been provided by Ulf Andersen from uh, LKAB. And uh, this anhydrite is very interesting because it's uh, Karuna was supposed to be forming in what's known as a back arc type or, or graben type basin in a shallow marine setting. So having some evaporites is maybe not unusual. And this comes from a vein of evaporites. And intriguingly, you see the sulfide grains here. So there's actually quite a bit of sulfide in there, uh, iron and copper sulfides. And uh, they're not enough to do much with them. I mean, geochemically we can, but for mining purposes, they're likely insufficient. So I'd like to show you one sample and this is a really intriguing one. And I'm not quite sure how to kind of uh, make this uh, fit into the rest of the sequence. And this is this sample. I only got it very recently again. It was sent from Ulf Andersen at LKAB. And this is a banded magnetite sample and uh, light colored materials here. This is a little bit of appetite. And um, well, the pen sticks rather well and uh, oops. Can lift it up even with the pen. And uh, here we have some debate about whether this is potentially a flow of magnetite, either as a mush or potentially even as a lava, or whether this might actually be a tectonized portion of the ore due to the various overprints, tectonic overprints, that have happened since the ore formed. So uh, we will have to do some more work and uh, I'm hoping to kind of use this sample to look at it under the SEM with the EBSD to see how the orientation kind of works out. We have some intriguing initial results, but more work is needed on that. 
So that was my little introduction to the Karuna samples that we have here. Thank you for joining and uh, I hope this was useful. So we can't really go there right now because of the COVID restrictions, but uh, hopefully soon they will be lifted and then I hope to have a little trip up there again. But for now, we have to make do with the rocks we have. And uh, well, they're nevertheless reasonably exciting, I think. I hope you enjoyed them too. All the very best. Talk soon. Bye-bye.